Hello, my name is Dean L. Hoss, and today I'm going to run through with you how you draw up the three column cash book. The three column cash book is an interesting book of original entry. It's used to record four different T accounts in one book. We can see here that the discount allowed is recorded in the cash book. The cash, the bank T account, and also the discount received. It's also clear that the three column cash book has a debit side, which is where all the transactions coming into the business will be placed, and has a credit side where all the payments out of the business are entered. So I'm gonna run through with you just a few of the features that you should expect to find in a three column cash book. In most IGCSE or A-level questions, you will be given a list of transactions and asked to enter those onto the debit side or the credit side of your three-column cash book. And at the end, they will probably also ask you to balance off the various accounts. So on the 1st of May in this example, we can see that we have a balance brought down from the previous month of 150 dollars under the cash column and four thousand five hundred dollars under the bank column. Now this does look very confusing at first to many students but actually it's very very straightforward. What we're saying is that the money that the business has in its cash account is 150 and if you went to the bank and you asked for your balance at the beginning on the first of May you have four thousand five hundred dollars. On the second of May we have a payment from our debtor, King, which goes on to the debit side, because obviously if a debtor pays us, it's going to go into our bank account in this case, so we would put it under the bank column, and the payment is $95, and is put in the bank column next to the discount allowed of $5, which we discussed in the previous tutorial. Now, on the opposite side of our cash book, we have all the credit entries. The debit entries are the items coming in, and of course the credit entries will be all the items coming out. So, you can see here that we have made a few payments. To Spiro, as we discussed in the previous tutorial, we made a payment of 97 in cash, so that's going to go under the cash column on the credit side as it is going out of our business, it's leaving our business. We received a discount of $3, so we put that into our discount received column. We also paid a few other items such as rent from our bank account of 500 and wages of 1000 Before we go through the balance carry down and bought down, it's important to point out that the cash book is arguably the most important business document in the accounting world. And the reason for that is, when you think about it, every transaction whether today, tomorrow, or in three months' time, is in some way going to involve either our cash account, our bank account, and will be affected by whether we receive a discount or we allow our debtors a discount. At the end of the month, we need to do a balance carried down and bought down, and many, many students find this part extremely complicated. Well, the good news is, for the discount allowed and received, you don't actually have to do a balance carry down and bought down. All you do is you add up the discounts allowed. In this case, there is only one discount, so five plus no other discounts is obviously going to give you a total of five. And the discounts received added together, three and no other discounts, will give you a total of three. If you had a number of other discounts, you would just simply add them all together and put the total for discounts received here and the total for discounts allowed on the debit side. When it comes to doing the balance carried down and bought down for the banks, it's a little trickier. But what you need to remember is that the columns are the transactions which occur for either cash or for the bank on the credit side, and the same either cash or bank on the debit side. So just as you would normally balance a T account off, you add up the smaller side and take it away from the larger side. So here we can see you have $150 cash at the beginning of the month. You made a payment of $97 cash 
Well, 150 minus 97 leaves you with a balance carried down of 53. What's that telling us? Well, it's just saying that we've got $53 left in our business cash till or in our safe within the actual company premises. We do the same thing now, but instead of looking at the cash columns, we now look at the bank columns and we take one away from the other. Now remember, it is possible to have more money going out than coming in with a bank, whereas it's impossible to have that for cash because you can't actually have a negative $100 bill. But you can have a bank overdraft. Now in this example, we actually have got more money in our bank than we've paid out. If you look at the balance at the beginning of the month, we had 4500 We also received a payment from King of $95. Add that together and you have a total of 4595 But hang on a minute, we did make some payments. We paid out 500 for our rent and 1000 for our wages. So when we take the 1500 away from the 4595 we had in our bank account, we're left with a balance of 3095 What's that telling us? Again, it means that if we were to go and check our bank balance at the beginning of June, we have actually got $3,095 in our bank account. We have $53 in our cash account. We received $3 in terms of discounts and we were allowed to our debtors $5 in discounts as well. Thanks for listening. I hope you found that useful. If you did, then please wait up for the next tutorial to load in the playlist. Remember, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you do like what we're doing here at IGCSE Accounts, then please hit the like button.